Farting. This is a lecture by Andrew Thomas at the One School for All um, a module at Estoril University College that I want you to watch before we meet on the 13th of November 2018. So, um, sorry, I've been walking through Europe. Actually, okay, I've been taking the train mostly, but um, and I've been having some thoughts. Of course, I've just been thinking about you people, and so I thought I would um, put these thoughts down. And um, as you can see, the um, the theme is the most natural thing at all um, you can think about when you're talking about diagnoses and dialogue. I want to talk to you about something that is very close to my heart, um, which is not to say my stomach, but um, farting. Now imagine you're in a classroom, or um, a train for that matter, and, um, and the person next to you, or one of your pupils, just delivers a series of farts. Now because you're nice, you're a nice person, you don't immediately get disgusted. You think this is natural. The person perhaps has some kind of medical condition, they have a bad stomach, something like that. But even if they did it deliberately, if they were able to magically control their farts, you can imagine that this would be explained away by some kind of uh, rebellious disorder or they're not entirely in control of their emotions, so they deliberately provoke you. Point is, you're nice, you're being tolerant, you make explanations, and you find out what is wrong. Well done. But then, what if they are doing this on purpose? Well, if that's the case, then they might be trying to send you a message. I'm not talking like the kind of people that burp the alphabet or anything, but they may be, may be trying to say something that you need to hear. It could be a rebellion. They're just saying, no, I'm not going with you on this. It could be that they just want you to live your life differently or do something differently. The point is, this could be a message and you could be ignoring it just by being tolerant and understanding and trying to help them or trying to think of what can be going wrong with their life and not reacting. One thing's certain, the longer you wait, the longer you ignore this message, the more awkward it's going to get and maybe more smelly. So the tolerance was um, connected with diagnosis, and we got through the kind of tolerance model first of all, um, tolerance and kind of finding out what's wrong with somebody, and then uh, and, and now this kind of dialogue listening thing is starting to get political implications. So I know what you're thinking. What was Foucault's take on all this? Well, I'll tell you. Foucault basically um, had this idea that um, we've got these kind of bonkers um, bureaucrats in our society. Uh, it's not that all bureaucrats are bonkers, it's just that um, in this, uh, our culture seems to produce um, either ideas of mad bureaucrats, people that don't actually know what's going on and that are laughable, but at the same time they have all this bureaucratic power because maybe maybe um, farting or, or making some kind of insulting um, um, reaction to, to kings used to work in sovereign societies where people were kings and they needed your respect. But they don't need your respect so long as you're taking part in a system. So you can uh, you can you don't actually have to listen to pupils. Just think about George Bush. No one really thought he was extremely intelligent, although I think they were wrong. I think he was a very clever man. Um, Oh, when he was a president, he's still alive, of course, George W. Bush. Um, but the fact is, he didn't need their respect in order to be their president. Um, and the same is true of Donald Trump at the moment. He's in, he's relishing the fact that people think he's stupid. He he well, he probably doesn't like it as such. But the point is, he's a, he's able to be a president without the respect of other people. He's able to be a president even though people insult him. So similarly, um, that, that's how democracy works um, um, today. And similarly, as a teacher, you don't actually have to, uh, you don't need the consent of the pupils. They're not in a democracy, they have to be in school. Um, but if you end up ignoring these messages, or even worse, farting back at them, insulting them back, which is a utterly despicable way of dealing with this problem. Um, but if you do, if you ignore these messages, you're able to do your job, it's quite possible. Um, but you may find yourself on the wrong side of history. So basically we've got these three models of um, listening to people, uh, and one of them produces diagnoses, and one of them um, listens um, listens, but doesn't necessarily have any effect. And the third one is um, listening um, whilst also doing your power and actually continuing as it was before. And these are basically three frames for the module that we've talked about. We've talked about diagnosis, we've talked about mapping, we've talked about dialogue, um, and in the next couple of weeks hopefully we're going to talk about the power of the whole thing, the politics.